my laptop is catching up to yours, but I'm going to call this uh, meeting of the Utility Service Board to order. Um, uh, first item we have on the agenda is to appoint roles for this uh, 2021 year. And um, so uh, we need nominations for president and vice president. Um, uh, I guess I'd like to nominate myself for president uh, as we've been talking about that. And is there a second for that nomination? I second. All right, Julie seconds. Um, any discussion on this? Okay, then uh, uh, Latrina, can you please call the roll on the motion to, or the nomination for Jean Kapler as president? Robert. Yes. Kapler? Yes. Bannock? Yes. Burnham? Yes. Eman? Yes. Parmenter? Yes. Sherman? Yes. Okay. Uh, so I uh, am uh, appointed president for this year. Thank you, everyone. Uh, next, um, are there any nominations for vice president for this year or anyone who wants to nominate themselves? I nominate Amanda. I right. second. All right. Um, and uh, is there any discussion about this, Amanda? <laughs> Do you have any comments? I'm shocked. <laughs> <laughs> but I suppose it's probably my turn. So absolutely, that, that sounds great. Excellent. OK, so Latrina, can you please call the roll? There we go. Eamon? Yes. Parmenter? Yes. Bannock? Yes. Sherman? Yes. Burnham? Yes. Kapler? Yes. Roberts? Yes. All right. Uh, thank you, Amanda, for stepping up and congratulations. Happy to work with everyone. <laughs> All right, wonderful. Okay, uh, next up, we've got approval of the minutes of the previous meeting on December 17th of this board. Um, uh, are there any uh, questions, concerns about the minutes, additions? All right, seeing none, then is there a motion to approve uh, the minutes? So moved. Is there a second? Second. All right, and Latrina, please call the roll. Bannock? Yes. Burnham? Yes. 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 Sermon? Yes. Kapler? Yes. Eamon? Yes. Parmenter? Yes. Roberts? Yes. Thank you. All right, minutes are approved. Thank you. Uh, next up, approval of the claims. So we've got payable invoices uh, finishing up from uh, 2020 in the amount of $231,913.37. Are there any questions on the payable invoices? Uh, yes, Mr. Eman. Yeah, two questions. One, uh, Environmental Resource Associates, number 955869, California Microbe Study. This is billed to water. I'm just wondering if uh, they're testing our raw water or our finished water or both. Um, I'll answer that. Um, it's it's a, a study that we have to participate in on a, a annual basis, and it's uh, the... I believe it was our um, finished water um, that we were doing there on that, on that particular one. Okay. Oops, thank you. Uh, number two is GRIP Inc. 1367, uh, one year of data housing for flow monitors. Um, so my hope is that we're actually paying more than uh, for, for $12,000 a year or $1,000 a month. This buys us something more than just data hosting. There's some added value or some other services included because that's a lot for just data hosting. Well, it's not simply hosting. It's also data collection from the field. It's all radio. 
this is the these are the sewer connection the sewer monitors right brad yeah i believe so yeah i'd have to yeah. confirm that but that's true that includes um hosting access there's multiple units they put the physical units in so well that that was uh, you confirmed my assumption that this was more than just what the note read uh thank you yeah other questions Okay, seeing none, then is there a motion to approve the payable invoices? So moved. Second. All right, and Latrina? Commenter? Yes. Eamon? Yes. Sherman? Yes. Bannock? Yes. Kepler? Yes. Burnham? Yes. Roberts? Yes. Thank you. All right. Payable invoices are approved. Next are standard invoices in the amount of $30,292.96. Uh, are there any questions about standard invoices? All right, seeing none, is there a motion to approve? So moved. Second. All right, and Latrina, please call the roll. Burnham? Yes. Roberts? Yes. Sherman? Yes. Kapler? Yes. Parmenter? Yes. Bannock? Yes. Eamon? Yes. All right. Standard invoices are approved. Next are the utility bills in the amount of $139,328.78. Uh, any questions about utility bills? Concerns? Being none, is there a motion to approve utility so bills? So moved. Second. And Latrina. Kapler? Yes. Parmenter? Yes. Sherman? Yes. Eamon? Yes. Burnham? Yes. Roberts? Yes. Bannock? Yes. Thank you. All right. Um, next up, wire transfers in the amount of uh, 367000 $350.26. Any questions on wire transfers? Seeing none, is there a motion to approve? Oh, yes. <laughs> so moved. Second. All right. And Latrina? Sherman? Yes. Bannock? Yes. yes. Roberts? Yes. Burnham? Yes. Kapler? Yes. Commenter? Yes. All right. Uh, wire transfers are approved. Last uh, in this section is customer refunds in the amount of $4,596.41. Uh, any questions on customer refunds? Not seeing any. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Second. And Latrina? Eamon? Yes. Burnham? Yes. Kapler? Yes. Bannock? Yes. Roberts? Yes. Is that everybody? No. Parmenter, yes. I don't believe Sherman or Parmenter were uh, called. Okay. So, uh, Parmenter, would it was your vote, please? Yes. And Sherman? Yes. Okay. Uh, so, customer refunds are approved. Um, uh, next up are uh, is the approval of the consent agenda, and uh, Vic Kelson will tell us about this. Evening, everyone. I'm happy to bring the consent agenda for tonight, which totals fourteen thousand one hundred twenty-six dollars. Uh, please note if. Uh, that the three items D, E, and F, all to Terminix, are not ready for vote and they've been removed from the list. Um, the first item is to Genesis Environmental Solutions for $5,370. It's inspection of seven above ground storage tanks, uh, $3,496 to Control Freaks Consulting uh, for uh, ultrasonic level sensors and transmitters at Monroe. Uh, also to Control Freaks, $3,500 for the second amendment to the agreement uh, on our SCADA update project. 
And then finally, Johnson Controls, uh, $1,760 for replacing the riser placards on the fire protection system at the service center. Uh, is, does, is there a board member who would like to consider any of these items separately from the others? Uh, hearing none, if there's no opposition, uh, these items will be approved as recommended by staff. And hearing no opposition, these items are approved. Thank you. Thank you, Vic. All right, uh, next item is the request for approval of resolution 2020-10, which is rounding up and donation program for the Lake Monroe Water Fund Steering Committee. Uh, Vic Kelson. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, I'm here happy to uh, bring this back to the board uh, app with the uh, rev revisions that were requested the last time around. Uh, the purpose of this item is to offer our customers the opportunity to contribute to the long-term uh, viability of Lake Monroe as a water supply uh, by making contributions voluntarily on their water bills. Uh, the water, the, well, the water, the money would be uh, kept separately and uh, put into the water fund uh, and would be available uh, for the water fund steering committee to distribute to organizations that would be doing uh, watershed rec restoration and other types of projects in the Lake Monroe watershed. Uh, this is a kind of an experimental idea. We've never done this before, uh, but it's an opportunity that uh, certainly gets us a vehicle for uh, uh, informing our customers of the importance of the Lake Monroe watershed and how it affects their lives. And uh, given that the city uh, lies almost entirely outside the Lake Monroe watershed, uh, it, it helps us contribute to the, the lake that sustains us all. So um, Chris uh, Wheeler has worked with a number of board members on amendments based on our discussion uh, last month. So I'll let Chris take it from here. The issue that I recall, oh, hi, I'm gonna get my video on. Sorry about that. Yeah, hi, this is Chris Wheeler with City Legal. And um, my best recollection of the issue that we were trying to resolve at the last meeting was a concern about some of the conditions precedent that uh, we would want to see or that the board would like to see put in place prior to um, implementation of a program, support of this program. Um, and I believe that through the updating of the language, we were able to address those concerns specifically that Amanda so appropriately brought to our attention. Um, and those would be to make sure that the entity itself is up and running uh, before we uh, start to support the program or put the program into place so that we know that there's actually an entity to receive any funds that might start to come in. Um, and also, I believe uh, that's the only one I thought we had, really. Uh, Amanda, you might refresh my memory, but that's what I thought we wanted to make sure we got uh, put into place. No, I think I think that was it. It just it, the original proposal made it sound like this was a done deal, and it was a matter of just a couple of little words. I think it's it's all it's all better now. Um, I do have two things that we to or one thing that does need to happen before it goes out for if it gets approved and it goes out for signature. The date is still showing December, so Latrina, if we get signatures, just to make sure that it's January 2021. And then I also do have a question, but I don't know if it's appropriate for my question right now. Okay, question, I can give it. No, I, oh, yeah. I just wanna make sure on one, one thing, and I, and I think I know the answer to it, but I think just for us to be completely transparent on, on this, is that in the event that an individual or a, does decide to round up, and we make these contributions to whichever group is the recipient of it, that we are keeping the donors to this fund anonymous. So they can't ever come to us and say, can we have a list of all of the people that rounded up? Um, because I don't think that that's, I, I don't think that's a, a fair practice. And I just wanna make sure that for the record, we're, we won't be doing that. Well, uh in, in this resolution, that sort of language is not spelled out. What's going to happen is that a the language for the program itself and its implementation will now need to be established, assuming this resolution is supported by the board. So then we would come back to the board with that language that would allow for the program to get placed. And I would expect that sort of language and those sort of details 
to be seen in at that time and for the board to be able to address those types of issues um, at that point in time, even before a program such as this gets put into place. That makes sense. Thanks, Chris. Any other questions or comments? Uh, Jim Sherman. Uh, Jim, we can't hear you. Yeah, Chris, um, so the opportunity to round up would appear on the monthly bill. Is that correct? Uh, I, I don't know yet what the vehicle will look like, Jim, honestly. I'm, I'm not sure whether it'll be entirely dependent upon uh, options made directly through billing or if it could be through billing and other options for uh, members to contribute, uh, customers to contribute. Um, so I, I don't know the details yet. I don't know those sorts of things. Okay, I was wondering specifically about people who pay their bills directly from their checking accounts. Well, what we presumably do would be to have uh, some sort of a sign-up vehicle where we would reach out to the customers and suggest that they can, they have the option of doing this and they would just sign up and have it putting on their on their monthly plan. You know, my, my intention, speaking for myself, would be to have it take a monthly, just yeah. put a monthly increase on my bill for this purpose. Okay, that's good, thank you. There are questions. Uh, Jeff, even. Yes, um, have there been projections of uh, annual revenue streams from this type of uh, initiative? At this point, no. Uh, you know, this is, as I said, an experiment. I don't know how many people are going to be interested in doing it. Um, my guess, you know, and my optimistic hope is that people in Bloomington would think this is a great opportunity uh, to put their money where their mouth is in terms of protecting the water supply. So I'm hopeful that we'll be able to advertise it and, and, and make it be something that would actually get some work done in the watershed. Yeah, I, I guess if you took the number of customers and multiplied times... 0 0.5, you could get a, a high estimate pretty easily. Right. Mm -hmm. And I can count the number of people who are in these meetings and, and hope <laughs> So as a starting place. So we'll just, uh, I think we'll have to see. Other questions? Comments? I had one just, I, I want to clarify um, uh, in uh, the resolution uh, down at the bottom, point number one, uh, it talks about uh, CBU customers, the opportunity to voluntarily round up their total monthly bill uh, to the nearest whole dollar and or make other donations. Um, and does that mean that, you know, I could have the option of rounding up, which I would do, and then let's say I want to contribute an extra dollar on my bill to this fund, I would have that option as well? Yes. Uh, that's exactly right. Yes. Sorry, Vic. I think I just jumped all over you. Um, but yes, the idea, at least from what I'm understanding in the communications I've had um, with those who are wishing to have this program put into place is that they'd like to, to have flexibility uh, given to those who might wish to donate so that they can just round up or give some other amount, do it a one-time deal, make it be more monthly or however, and, and, and then be able to terminate their donations okay. uh, at, at their whim. Okay. And I just had one last question. So the the um, uh, marketing and education around this program, uh, marketing to the public saying, hey, there's this chance that you can help support the health of our lake and our primary water source. Um, is, is that outreach and um, advertising around this program uh, going to be done by this uh, nonprofit board entity, or is it going to be us doing that? I know obviously we'll be putting notices out to our customers that this is available, but the real marketing part of that, who's in charge of that? Well, I think the answer is yes. I think what we would do is probably do a bill announcement periodically about it, maybe once a year, just to remind people. Uh, but but really, I, the, the, this is um, an opportunity where I, I think the people who are leading the Water Fund Steering Committee, which is a pretty big group, uh, that's certainly something that, that they are more connected with 
the donor base than we are. We're we're providing a vehicle, uh, but we're not we're not the fundraisers. We're just providing the place where you can drop your money. Okay, very good. Any other questions or comments? All right, seeing none. Uh, is there uh, a motion to approve this resolution 2020-10? So moved. Does the public have, um, do we have any um, availability for as asking questions? Um, my understanding is that uh, public comment comes at the end of the meeting, but I don't know, um, uh, okay. Chris or Vic, do you, you take can, that? A, a, a point of order that there's a motion already made, and so at that point, discussion would end. Um, <laughs> Uh, this we is awkward because of the way the board is being run through through virtual meeting, and I don't think anybody noticed that Miss Madori is it uh, Madori Major, uh, yes. didn't have a we, we didn't we didn't notice that she wanted to raise her hand and talk until the motion was made. But technically speaking, once the motion is made, conversation is uh, only to be had within the board. Can we withdraw the mo the motion? Vic looks like he would would like to say something. Well, I was going to just say, can they can can we withdraw the motion for the purpose of taking public comment? Uh, it's not a, yes, that it wouldn't be it's not a Q and A. It would be it would be a comment, not a Q and A thing. Okay. Uh, yes, the motion can be withdrawn. I withdraw my motion so we can hear public comment. Okay, and the board recognizes uh, Mary Midori. Thank you so much. Um, well, I'm with the uh, Friends of Lake Monroe, and um, we've been very happy to receive funds from CBU and the county stormwater um, to that has allowed us to move forward on this grant and um, hire Maggie Sullivan as our watershed coordinator. And um, we had um, 70 citizen scientists um, go out in the field and collect um, from 125 sites and. We've been out um, working with the public, and anyways, um, we've we've um, tried to connect with um, various counties, the Brown County, and um, and um, is is one of the major parts of the watershed. So we're we're trying to make some inroads there. In, in any in any regards, um, we um, we are. I am wondering um, if this is to pass. Are there funds cut out um, to um, to help um, the Friends of Lake Monroe if we um, apply for a second grant that would follow up the the first grant that we received to then develop the watershed plan? Um, I mean that is that's something that you know we're getting all this um, scientific data um, to tell us where where we should be um, pinpointing um, the work um, to. Make corrections, and um, it would be—I um, think it would be a, a terrible waste of money if we didn't then have um, follow-up funds um, to enact um, and work on the problems that, that we um, are finding. Um, so I don't know if there's any money that is dedicated for, or a portion of this money that would be dedicated to the Friends of Lake Monroe, or. Um, would CBU um, again want to support us um, through their funds? So that that's my question. Thank you so much. Thank you, and and I'm so sorry I missed you the first time around. Um, so I'm glad we backed this up. Um, and uh, Vic, is is this something that we could uh, explore? Yeah, those are all conversations for another day. This is uh, the the water fund uh, is an, an, an overarching organization and they'll be able to make contributions to whatever projects they wish, uh, but that's out, that's going to be outside of our hands. Mm -hmm. um, uh, in terms of a special appropriation, that's a conversation for a different day. Okay, thank you. All right, so uh, is there a motion to approve the resolution 2020-10 that we are considering? So moved. Is there a second? Second. All right, and Latrina, can you please call the roll? Uh, uh, Latrina? I think you're on mute. Hi, sorry about that. 
about that turnover? Fanning? Yes. Sherman? Yes. Eamon? Yes. Burnham? Yes. Parmenter? Yes. Roberts? Yes. Kapler? Yes. Thank you. All right, uh, resolution is approved. Uh, next item, request for approval of agreement with milestone contractors for the Jordan River storm culvert reconstruction. And Jane Fleeg will tell us about this. Yes, <clears throat> thank you. Jane Fleeg for the record. Um, I'm bringing forward the contract for the Jordan River uh, storm culvert project uh, to be awarded to Milestone. If you'll recall, at the December 7th meeting of the Utility Service Board, you approved a resolution to accept the lump sum bid that they provided. Um, this is now bringing forward the contract, uh, the official contract for your signature so that we can begin um, this project. Um, we're looking at a total contract amount of $13,184,000. I will mention that the traffic signal at 3rd and Lincoln is included in our project. That work will be actually reimbursed by the Public Works Department uh, right now, that bid amount is $228,000. So they will be paying that portion of the work uh, once we um, enter into an MOU, which I hope to bring to the next Utility Service Board meeting. And then we, are, we have also been discussing with Milestone some potential um, value engineering ideas and hope to bring that to you within the next uh, couple of USB meetings if we can come up with some ideas for uh, potential cost savings. It's not, I don't think we'll see a huge uh, savings, but we're, we're looking at everything that we can. So I'm hoping for your approval of this agreement this evening. Thank you. Uh, are there any questions for Jane? Uh, Jeff. Uh, how much uncertainty is there in the cost of a project like this relative to say a construction project, uh, uh, a, a new construction project where we're not refurbishing uh, uh, this storm sewer. I'm not sure I understand the question. Are you, are you referring to the fact that the engineer's estimate was lower than the actual bid amount? No, just uh, the, the fact that we're, you know, uh, tearing up uh, a ground going through a, an urban area. And I, mean, I, I would imagine things will be encountered that are unexpected more so than uh, a normal construction project. I'm just guessing. I'm just wondering what you know. How much um, uh, uh, extra funds, or you know, what percentage is set aside for for contingencies? Um, included in the bid for this project was a two hundred two hundred thousand dollar mandatory contingency. So all bids came in with an extra two hundred thousand dollars built in. I know it's minimal, but um, it is something. Um, we have fairly good information on the Jordan culvert uh, itself. We've, we've uh, done surveys, internal surveys of it, so we know what's within that culvert, um, anything that we may be encountering that may be problems. I agree, we're in a downtown area and it, it could potentially come up with some, some issues that we weren't expecting, but um, this is one of the last pieces of that Jordan culvert to replace and it's, it's important that we move forward with it. And, hope for the best. We, I think Milestone will be a good team player with us. So uh, I'm actually looking forward to this. Thank you, Jane. Other questions or comments? Jane, Jane do we have an approximate start date? Uh, they would like to start as soon as possible. So once we get this contract signed, we're, we will um, get their bonds and such in place start receiving submittals uh, for approval and hopefully maybe begin by the beginning of February. Okay, and it's, is it, it is the kind of work that we could do when it's cold? Oh yeah, yeah, the, this is a two year project. So we will be working <laughs> all seasons. Okay, thanks. Other questions or comments? Uh, yes, Scott Robinson. Thank you. Hey, Jane, just to clarify, is this repairing the section that had that temporary repair there over Third Street? It does include that section, yes. Okay. It, it goes from south of that all the way up to um, for the 4th and Grant area. Okay, I just to clarify, I just know that we had that temporary fix there, and I wanted to make sure this was covering that. Thank you.
Any other questions? Okay, seeing none, then is there a motion to uh, approve this agreement? So moved. Second. And second, all right. And Latrina, please call the roll. Roberts? Yes. Eamon? Yes. Kepler? Yes. Burnham? Yes. Sherman? Yes. Primenter? Yes. Bannock? Yes. Thank you. All right, agreement is approved. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thanks so much, Jane. Uh, next up, request for approval of an agreement with Wessler Engineering Incorporated for design and bid phase services at Monroe uh, Water Treatment Plant. Brad Schrader will tell us about this. Brad. Hi, it's Brad Schrader Engineering Department, our division. Um, this is a construction of a, we finished doing an algicide study for the Monroe plant where we were being algicide throughout last year and proving that it would uh, kill the algae and reduce our solids load, which was creating previous to this a very large problem in the plant. The study was successful and item has accepted us using this going forward. Last year we used a complete temporary system for it and we need to build a permanent system now to feed the algicide. Right now we're using totes in between two pumps in the intake. And we're gonna use the same moment to also reset up the speed system for uh, sodium permanganate, which is also in the intake and it's not, it's poorly placed in there also. So this is a design project where we're gonna set up a new feed system for algicide and move the permanganate feed system right next to it at the Monroe intake. The uh, Wessler Engineering is who we're gonna work with on it. We've been working with them on other projects at Monroe and they've been doing good work with us. And this is going to take us through bid paid services and the contract amount is $104,000. And construction will be, it'll all be done this year. Design and construction will be done this year. Uh, take any questions that anybody would might have at this point. Any questions? Okay, I'm not seeing any. Uh, with that then, is there a motion for approval of this agreement with Wessler? So moved. Second. All right, and Latrina, please call the roll. Kepler? Yes. Burnham? Yes. Parmenter? Yes. Sherman? Yes. Bannock? Yes. Roberts? Yes. Eamon? Yes. Oh. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, Next item, request for approval of an agreement with Electric Plus Incorporated for LED lighting conversion at the Utilities Service Center. And Cindy Shaw. Cindy was gonna... having trouble getting on. This is Nolan Hendon, oh. at Administration Division. Um, this is for a complete LED conversion at our service center, <clears throat> excuse me, both inside and outside for $34,391. Um, it would also it would reduce our uh, energy bill, obviously, but also increase our lighting quality outside where we have some poorly lit areas. Okay, thank you. Uh, any questions for Nolan? Uh, seeing none, then is there a motion to approve this agreement? So moved. Second. And Latrina, please call the roll. Sherman? Yes. Commenter? Yes. Burnham? Yes. Eamon? Yes. Roberts? Yes. Stanek? Yes. Tyler? Yes. Thank you. All right, uh, agreement is approved. Uh, next, request for approval of an agreement with 120 Water Audit Inc. for COVID wastewater testing and monitoring for nine months at Blucher Pool and Dillman Wastewater Treatment Plans. And James Hall, you're gonna talk with us about this, please. Yes, thank you. Um, yes, this is to continue the um, COVID sampling at our two wastewater plants, taking one sample a week from Dillman and from Blucher on influent water. Uh, we will continue this for nine months and possibly extend it or cut it short, depending on what kind of uh, data we're seeing within the community. Um, this is for the analysis of those samples and the data storage within uh, 120 Waters software. Okay. Good. It's for $34,488. All right. And uh, Julie, I think you have a question. 
Yeah, um, James, is are we only sampling at the plants? I thought we were sampling at a lot of lift stations too, so we can sort of find the outbreaks before they get bad. That that was when we were part of the Indiana Finance Authority. Uh, we were part of a program that they were running and paying for, and we had all those sites. Um, now that we're going to be paying for it, we've kind of reduced it down to the two wastewater treatment plants. Hmm. Okay, so that program's over with. Correct. Has has the hospital expressed any interest in helping us do what they were doing before? It just seemed like it was awfully good information since it was giving them a heads up before it got worse. This is, that's something that we can talk with the health department and the hospital and others and IU also about because um, at this point we don't know if IFA is going to fund this again or not. That was still open for some discussion. But yeah, certainly we can talk with the with our partners in the community and see if we can expand this. Okay. Yeah, because I, I read a news story about what good, good information that turned out to be in all the locations where they did it. So I, I'd really like to see it continue. Other questions? Amanda had Amanda. a hand up. I just had a question about the coding of it. I noticed in the funding source there that we've added another category next to the account funding. It says S20-COVID. Is that something that we are tracking or it, I maybe just explain that because I, I don't remember seeing that before. And if we did, I just, I missed it. Yeah, it, it, it's a project number. So any large projects that we have, um, finance puts a, a project number. And so we're tracking all our COVID expenses, anything that we do so that we can ask for re possibly reimbursement. And Vic, you can talk about that more. But. Yeah, if, you, there, if there's a future go round of CARES funding, we can, we may be able to get it reimbursed. Thanks. And I also had another question just in terms for the public and those watching. Has there been, I, I know there's been a lot of talk right now in the media just in terms of is, is there, you know, is the COVID getting put into our water systems? And I know that's why we're doing this, but is, can we have a little reassurance from you folks that um, everything's, everything's going well? Uh, yeah, uh, you're not, you, this is not, we're not actually collecting virus. We're ca collecting, um, um, strands of RNA that are related to the presence of the virus. So this isn't really a, a case where somebody who's going to go out and take a sample is going to get COVID. That's not the way it works. Exactly. Thank you. I have a, a question. Um, with sampling at uh, the two treatment plants once a week, um, is that uh, then in, in terms of what we can use that data for, is that going to be just documentation of, of levels in the effluence or is that going to have any predictive, you know, give uh, health officials a heads up that numbers are on the rise? Um, is once a week frequent enough for that? I, I think the way we see it is that we're going to continue to not, we if, if if the if things get better over time fairly quickly, say the the, the vaccine comes on the scene and people are getting vaccinated, uh, you can watch you can hopefully watch this to see how we're making progress or see if things are going going south on us. Um, if we get partway into the year and then all of a sudden something unforeseen happens and things just really start going crazy again, then who knows? Maybe IFA funds another program. Maybe they fund another study. We just don't want there to be a gap in the record. Uh, we're basically reestablishing the sampling plan we had before IFA came on the scene. We were sampling for more than a month before IFA funded the big program. So the, the basically we're just trying to keep keep sampling going at this point while we're while we're watching to see what else comes along. Okay, thank you. Is that a good description, James? Yes. Yeah. Any other questions? Okay, seeing none, then is there a motion to approve this agreement with 120 Water Audit? So moved. Second. And Latrina, please call the roll. I'm the only one that wrote Yes. Roberts? Yes. Burnham? Yes. Bannock? Yes. Eamon? Yes. Sherman? Yes. Parmenter? Yes. Thank you. All right. 
Uh, agreement is approved. Uh, next request for approval of First Amendment to the agreement with uh, Potomac Electrical Services, DBA Electrical Maintenance and Testing will repair the GE Magna Blast Breakers at the Dillman uh, plant. Cindy Shaw is not here. And uh, I, I, this is Chris Wheeler with City Legal. Okay, Chris. Well, I can jump in at this last uh, agreement. Uh, so a while back, we approved an agreement to do this very thing with regards to the Magna Blast. Uh, let me scroll down. Um, this uh, the summary that I've prepared in the uh, cover memo is is rather extensive to show what we're doing with regards to this amendment. Um, and so the amendment expands the scope of work from the original agreement that this board approved. It includes additional work necessary to repair a GE Magna Blast breakers at the Dillman Wastewater Treatment Plant. Expanding the scope necessities necessitates the following changes. I apologize. Uh, it, it's going to extend the contract expiration date out to June 30th of this year. It's going to extend the work completion date out to April 30th of this year. Uh, it will increase the original not to exceed by $5,165, making the, the new not to exceed $34,565. It'll also include an additional scope of work, which is spelled out in the Exhibit A of the agreement. Uh, and just for the board's recollection, the original not to exceed was $29,400. Uh, staff recommends approval of the amendment, and I'm happy to try and answer questions if I can. Are there any questions for Chris? All right, uh, seeing none, then is there a motion to uh, approve this First Amendment to the agreement? So moved. Second. And Latrina, please call the roll. Chairman? Yes. Prime Minister? Yes. Eamon? Yes. Burnham? Yes. Roberts? Yes. Sappler? Yes. Bannock. Yes. Thank you. All right. Uh, that is approved. Thank you. Thank uh, you. Thanks so much, Chris. Um, now, before we move on to old business, I just want to let the public know if you are watching on our Facebook live stream that uh, a little later we will be calling for any petitions and communications from the public. And so if you want to share anything with us, uh, please put that in the comments on our Facebook live stream. All right. And then Holly will uh, read them in our meeting. Okay. Is there any old business from the board? Any old business from staff? There's none. Okay. Uh, any new business from the board? Seeing none, any new business from staff? There's none. Okay. Uh, subcommittee reports. Uh, finance uh, committee met earlier today. Yes, the finance committee met. Um, the one item on the agenda was the Waterworks rate review with an eye toward increasing the rates, um, we did it last um, about four years ago, and um, we had a presentation on what the rate increase might be and what it would be used for. We also heard uh, about the cost of service study, which um, will necessitate um, changing the um, or allocating and changing the uh, the rates that are paid by the different categories. And as soon as possible, we're gonna to try to get them in equilibrium so that every category pays its fair share. That won't be done immediately, but um, it will take a while. Um, we'll, we'll have all categories in equilibrium paying their fair share by 2024, and then there'll be only one category irrigation that will be left um, to put in equilibrium. So the presentation was was good. We got a lot of good information and we have other meetings of the finance committee scheduled if we need them. And then this will come to the utility service board on what date, Vic? Um, it will come to the utility service board on January 19th. January 19th, and then soon after that, we'll go to city council. 
So that's the report. There was nothing to vote on. Okay. Thank you very much for the, the report. Um, were there any uh, questions for Jim? Yeah, Julie? Just, are we meeting on the 19th because of MLK Day? Yes. All right, just making sure. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, and I don't think there were any other subcommittees, correct? No. Okay. Um, and then we'll move on to staff reports. Uh, Vic Kelson. Uh, just a, a quick follow up on, on what uh, Jim said about the subcommittee meeting. I, I want to make sure that uh, we announce at this time that we are planning to have a staff uh, open house on Zoom uh, for uh, customers, uh, large customers and small who are interested and want to know more about the rate, uh, rate case and rate study. That will be on Zoom at uh, 12 o'clock from 12 to 1.30 on Thursday. Uh, we will uh, uh, make that available in the next day or two. Uh, that is a meeting that just in the interest of not running afoul of open door, uh, it would be best if uh, board members did not plan to attend that meeting simply because we don't wanna take a chance of running into an open door violation. So uh, it, we will report back to you on anything important that we learn. That's my first item. The second one is uh, I'd like to welcome Scott Robinson uh, as our new ex officio board member uh, from the planning department. I know Scott's been here before, uh, but we did not officially welcome you. So welcome aboard, Scott. It's good to have you here. Hey, thanks, Vic, appreciate that. Uh, another personnel item that I completely forgot uh, since we, we met so uh, early last month, uh, Ed Sherfield, who was a 44 year employee of the utilities department uh, retired on December 31st. So uh, I should have said something when we could have had Ed come on uh, the meeting last month and then I feel terrible about that. But I just wanted to make mention of that. Uh, Ed did all sorts of things in T&D over the years and has been just a, a loyal and uh, reliable uh, employee for, the, for all that time. So uh, we'll miss him. TND will miss him, and uh, we wish him all the best in his retirement. Um, as you know, we finished a lot of big stuff last year. Uh, we've got more big stuff going on this year, and now we're just beginning uh, the the Jordan River Tunnel project, um, and that's a big deal for the city. That project's been out there for 25 years, waiting for one of these days we're going to do it. So one of these days is finally here. Um, it's uh, going to be a, a a big deal and uh, we'll do everything we can to make sure that there's as little disruption as possible as we're, do, as we're executing it. But we do hope that the, um, that the community will be able to be patient uh, as we're going through downtown. There's gonna be a lot of disruption, uh, but as the project goes on, uh, but I know our engineers have worked really hard uh, to minimize that. At the end of the day, uh, it's a big improvement in our stormwater management system. So. I'm really happy to have that uh, project underway and uh, just uh, happy to be starting a new year. So I uh, hope everyone is well and uh, we'll, uh, we'll see you in a couple of weeks. Okay, thank you. Um, and so now we are at the point where if there is any uh, public comment uh, for petitions and communications, I'll check in with Holly, I any comments that should be shared? No comments or questions via Facebook. Okay. And I do see that Maggie Sullivan would like to make a public comment. You have the floor for five minutes. I'll be less. So I'm Maggie Sullivan. I am the watershed coordinator for Lake Monroe, working for Friends of Lake Monroe. Uh, I just wanted to hop in and say I think this roundup concept is really exciting. We were a little surprised by the timing since the water fund is still in formation but it sounds like you guys are thinking through how to make that all fall into place, just getting the ball rolling now. Um, just kind of wanted to touch base and uh, make sure that this is all tying into the watershed management plan that we're working on. We're about halfway through our project now, so we're just getting into the heart of things, uh, starting to review the water quality data that's coming in, starting to identify some of the critical areas and projects that could improve water quality. Um, but we really hope that the way this water fund project works out, uh, it will use that watershed management plan to guide 
and prioritize what projects do get funded. So um, I'm hoping to uh, collaborate a little bit more with the Water Fund Steering Committee. We did have a member of the Friends of Lake Monroe board on that committee, um, Kevin Dogan, but he has stepped down from both the board and the Water Fund. So we're working on making a reconnection there, getting uh, more closely involved. Uh, we would love to, Friends of Lake Monroe, would love to come and talk to you again next month, um, give you an update. And then there's also a little bit of a question about some funds that you provided. Um, you're providing uh, my salary, which I appreciate. And you also had provided some funds for office space. And I ended up getting an office with the Indiana Geological and Water Survey. Um, I ended up also working out of my basement, as many of us have this year. But um, we would like to talk to you about those funds and if there's a way they might be reallocated in a way that'll serve all of our needs. So uh, hoping to come back and speak a little bit longer in February, but thank you. Thank you. Very good. It's nice to hear kind of where things are at. So I would look forward to hearing from you in the future. All right. Um, uh, with that, then, is there a motion for adjournment? So moved. All right, we are adjourned. Thank you all for showing up and for your work tonight. Happy New Year.